Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz. Today we are going to talk about expected utility. So we economists use expected utility to describe your welfare under uncertainty. So for example, if you are buying a lottery, then there is a chance that you win. There is also a chance that you don't win. So it's under uncertainty. Or when you're trying to park at an authorized area, then there's a chance that you get towed and suffer a loss. But there's also a chance that nothing happens. So you can see there are a lot of situations under uncertainty. And we economists use expected utility to describe this kind of situation. So today we're going to talk about three kinds of risk preference. Risk aversion, risk loving, and risk neutral. Now I'm going to give you the bottom line first and then I'm going to explain what that means. So suppose you're given two options. One is that you can participate in a lottery with a, a half chance you're going to get $100 and with probability a half you're going to get nothing, so $0. Or you can get $50 for sure in your pocket and you can go home. So which one would you choose? Would you prefer to play the lottery or would you prefer to have the $50 in your pocket? So suppose you choose the $50, then you are risk averse. Suppose you say you prefer to play the lottery with a half a chance to get $100 and a half a chance to get $0, then you are risk loving. Now if you say I'm neutral or I'm indifferent between the two options, then you are risk neutral. So let me explain what that means. Um, so this is a lottery. Um, you are going to get 100% chance. One means 100% chance to get $50. And you say you prefer that to the chance to win $100 and also with probability 50%, you're going to get nothing. So that means the utility of $50 is higher than the expected utility of this lottery, which is a half times the utility of $100 plus a half times the utility of zero. So this one is bigger than that. Then you are risk averse and you prefer to have $50 in your pocket for sure. It is kind of similar to um, better one bird in hand than two birds in the forest, right? That's risk averse. So one example is that your utility is equal to the square root of x. So we can plug in the um, payoff of $50. So what is the utility of $50 for sure? And after you calculate that, you take the square root of 50, then you get 7.07. .07. Then what is the utility, the expected utility of this lottery? There will be a half times the utility of $100 plus a half times the utility of $0. Then you plug in this um, utility function and after you calculate that, you get 5. So clearly 7.07 .07 is higher than 5. And that's the reason why you prefer to have $50 for sure. And if you draw the um, utility curve, then you can see this is a utility function. So that would be, um, this would be $50, $100. And if you plug in $50 into the utility function, you get 7.07. .07. And the expected utility of that lottery will be a half times 10 plus a half times 0, and that gives you 5. So here, you can see the letter L that stands the expected utility of that um, lottery. So that's only 5. 5 is less than 7.07, .07, so you choose to have $50 in your pocket for sure. Now we're going to move on to risk loving. So risk loving, if you remember, you choose to play the lottery that gives you a chance, a 50% chance to win $100 rather than $50 for sure. So that tells me, hey, um, your expected utility of that lottery is higher than the utility of $50 for sure. So one example is uh, um, expected utility. So the utility of x is equal to x squared. Then um, you can plug in numbers. The utility of $50 for sure is equal to x squared. So 50 squared, that's equal to 2,500. And what is the um, expected utility of the lottery? There will be a half times the utility of $100 plus a half times the utility of $0. And if you plug in numbers, 
$100 squared is equal to 10,000. Uh, times a half plus a half times zero because the utility of zero dollar is still zero. And that expected utility is 5,000. Now clearly 5,000 is higher than 2,500. So you prefer to play the lottery. And graphically, you can see that this is a utility function. And the utility of $50 for sure is here. So $50, you plug in the utility function that gives you 2,500. But what is the expected utility of the lottery? So you, you do um, a half times 10,000, that's the um, utility from $100, and plus a half times zero, because zero squared is still zero. And that gives you 5,000. So this is the um, expected utility of the lottery, and that's higher than the utility of uh, $50 for sure. So you can see that um, that's with lovely. And finally, if you're telling me I am neutral between $50 for sure and playing the lottery, then you are risk neutral. Um, that means the utility of $50 is exactly the same as expected utility of that lottery. So um, your, our example is ux is equal to um, um, 1 over 10 times x, but anything that is linear will work. So you can see that um, utility of $50 is equal to 50 divided by 10, that gives you 5. And the expected utility of playing the lottery is a half times the utility of 100, which gives you 100 divided by 10, that's 10, plus a half times the utility of $0, that's 0, and that gives you 5. So you can see 5 is equal to 5, and therefore you are neutral between having $50 for sure or playing the lottery. So now you will ask, um, what exactly is our risk preference? Are we risk loving or are we uh, risk averse? Well, you can be both at the same time. The fact that you're buying a lottery shows me that you are risk loving. But the fact that you're buying insurance shows me that you are risk averse. So you can be risk averse and risk loving at the same time, depending on the situation. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.